Hey everybody, it's Curse and today I'm going to bless you with a Bleed Javelin build guide. It's quite similar to an Electrified Javelin if you've played that, but I think it dishes out more DPS and you get to wear a shield, so it has a little bit more flexibility in defense as well. I was min-maxing this build on stream recently and we were trying out the max block version of it. I decided to opt away from that and go towards a more DPS version as usual. I love my glass cannon, but anyways, you can try running a max block version. Oh, and if you like the build guide, like and subscribe, follow me on Twitch. We're gonna be min-maxing a bunch of builds on Sunday, April 2nd. So if you're interested, join in and let's have some fun together. So let's jump in. Irashemase! Let's change things up and start with a showcase of the gameplay style in Monolith. You're seeing a Monolith 376 corruption, I believe. And the build is great for a single target like Jora and other bosses, but it's a little bit squishy and not as mobile as you would like for Monolith. You can see that we have to kite a lot, just constantly moving away from enemies and trying to bunch them up so that our javelins do as much damage as possible with the limited AOE that we're working with. And we're activating Holy Aura whenever possible. Lunge is not a great mobility skill because it requires an enemy to target. So the only way to get away from enemies is to move into another bunch of enemies. We try to keep our sigils up, mana permitting, of course. And Volatile Reverso is mostly for boss killing and just high single target burst. Or for getting out of dodge if you happen to lunge into a sticky situation. You just pop your Volatile Reverso and you're right back where you started. But yeah, the playstyle is very straightforward. You throw javelins, they make stuff bleed and stuff dies. Alright, let's go over the skills. So, javelin is our main and only source of DPS really. So we'll start there. And the build revolves around converting Javelin to throw three Javelins raining down and adding an additional two Javelins, so five Javelins in total. But in order to make that work, these two nodes right here, you need a lot of mana cost reduction on Javelin. Because the base mana cost is nine, and then we're adding another 12, so that becomes 21. And then we are increasing that by 50%. So how do we make it work? Well, the important thing to notice here is that mana cost plus 50%, anytime you see that kind of boost on any skill, that's applied after minus mana cost reduction, uh, itemization or even skill node stuff. So this plus 50% applies after mana cost minus nine here and after mana cost minus whatever from our rings for throwing attacks. So what that means is we really want to reduce the mana cost of Javelin with minus mana cost uh, itemization and skills selection as much as possible before picking up this node right here. So we're dealing with 21 mana cost. This brings it down back to 12. And then if you equip two rings that can take it down maximum by minus 10, you bring it down to two mana and so plus 50%, that makes it cost only three mana in total. And that's how we can sustain this build. And these are very much essential. These two skill nodes, as well as this one, it just uh, ramps up the DPS for the build quite a bit. Perhaps as you're leveling up, you can tone down the number of points you put in spike bombardment until you get the right rings for the build but uh, your DPS will go down a little bit because you're only throwing down three javelins. After that, since it is a bleed build, we want to max out spear to the thigh because it gives us basically double damage. And then we want to head over to strategic patience for an extra 50% more multiplier. So 1.5 times the damage. And unfortunately the trade-off is that our attack speed is reduced by 25%. It's still worth it though. I tested it on the dummy and we do get better ticks on the dummy with this node included, even though we have to invest three points into it to make it happen. And then 
you have a few points left over you can just add a little bit more bleed a little bit more attack speed and damage yeah I, i'm not sure which one is better so i just put one point in each next let's go over holy aura and this one's sim simple as well max out your attack speed here another one throwing attack speed right here max out your physical damage because bleed is physical damage and of course make everything a lot easier by adding 25 percent elemental resistances and 15 percent endurance next we have sigils of hope for this one it's a pretty standard layout for them get the damage boost get sigils on kill and then make sure they're insta cast get your endurance threshold per sigil this is great because we have max endurance as well get your duration and get your max sigils plus one volatile reversal super standard as well you really need to get this node enemy damage over time taken plus 60 percent and this one plus 30 percent and together that's 90 percent but the best part is if you're close to the enemy that gets applied twice because they're getting hit by the void rift at start and at arrival and so that's 180 percent extra damage that the enemy is taking this skill is absolutely overpowered for dot builds especially uh, and then yeah get the cooldown reduced here and here and finally we have lunge we get invulnerability while lunging a little bit of health we apply frailty chance unfortunately you need to be farther away from the enemy for this to work perfectly and finally we get some kill threshold and uh, again we have to pull back from the enemy and then apply this it's not ideal honestly i wish they removed that condition to be 10 meters away but yeah that's it for the skills all right now let's go over the itemization so for core items for this build to work i would only mention the two rings and the reason for that is is you need throwing attack mana cost reduction i have two tier 7 ones identical in fact because i used one of these rune of creation on them so if you get lucky and you get a tier 7 throwing attack mana cost reduction try to duplicate it it's so useful having two of them minus five but you can make this build with two minus four or maybe one minus five and a minus three uh, that would bring the mana cost of javelin to six let's say so you can make the build work and if you're getting if you're really struggling with the mana cost you can always throw in foot of the mountain which if you're standing still they reduce the mana cost of your skills and that's going to bring the mana cost of your javelin down to zero so that's kind of like a fallback option but preferably get that mana cost reduction through your rings and so yeah those are the only two core items that i would mention and then we go into semi core items items that make the build a lot better but are not essential for it to work the first one is valder's chalice it gives a lot of bleed on hit bleed duration which are phenomenal for the build more importantly it gives you a little bit of physical damage over time and 20 health gained on kill per stack of bleed on the target that stat is just incredible for running monoliths you'll find yourself frequently going from like 100 hp up to max just from one enemy dying because you're stacking like a hundred stacks and that's like 2k hp right there as soon as the enemy dies so definitely you want to be running valder's chalice if you haven't found it it's not the end of the world your dps is lower and your survivability is a little bit lower but you can replace it with a, just a generic relic that has increased damage over time and some solid defensive suffixes the next semi-core item i'll mention is the chest piece and for both the helmet and the chest piece really it's the same thing you want to get these three prefixes bleed duration physical penetration with bleed and chance to bleed if wielding an axe one of them should be sealed and then the other two as high level as possible so those are the chest piece and helmet piece that you want to be uh, itemizing around yeah it might take some time to get them exalted in the exact way that you want but rare is just as good if you get those three prefixes lined up in a rare item that can be better than having one of them in an exalted item and then the last semi-core item I'll mention is the amulet. Bleeding Heart is really good for this build. It, it adds even more sustain with the damage leeched as health. 
we are inflicted with bleed when we cast a spell, but we don't really care about that. We're not going to be casting too many spells. And then the other items, you really want to be running an axe in your main hand slot, just because of that synergy with chance to bleed if wielding an axe. And of course, you want to have chance to bleed on hit, tier 7 preferably, damage over time in your prefixes, physical percent damage in your prefixes. That's the three affixes that you want to be looking out for. And then another reason this build synergizes with axes is they get chance to bleed on hit and bleed duration. So in this case, you'll see 13% bleed duration. Unfortunately, the chance to bleed on hit is on melee hits, so it doesn't help the javelin strikes. But there are axes that actually say chance to bleed on hit. Unfortunately, these are bugged and they don't apply to throwing hits. I tested this out. It applies to melee hits, it applies to spells like smite, but it does not apply to javelin for some reason. So I made a bug threat on the ESG forums and hopefully they fix that. And as soon as they do, up to 100% bleed on hit, that's pretty much a tier 7 chance to bleed on hit uh, suffix. If you get a, a really lucky, you can essentially run two tier 7 chance to bleed on hits in this axe right here. Definitely recommend it once they fix that bug. But otherwise, yeah, just pick an axe where you have a tier 7 bleed on head. And then on the shield side, you have a choice, in my mind, between three shields, really. Flare's Pride is the DPS option. More physical penetration with bleed. More importantly, greater chance to bleed on head, up to 91%. It just gives you a bunch more DPS. A second option, and this is quite a bit more defensive, is Face of the Mountain. And with this one, you want to try and get as much endurance as possible just to get your block chance as high as possible. I got it up to 90 some percent where I was testing this concept just to see how high you can get. And yeah, you can certainly get it to 100% block chance. And then if you get lucky and get the block effectiveness in the prefixes, I was trying for a tier seven block effectiveness in this one. That's kind of what you want in this shield just to boost up your defenses. Another defensive option is, of course, Bastion of Honor, but that one is a little bit too tried and uh, it's played around too much already. Uh, and then in terms of gloves and boots, it's pretty straightforward. Just do stuff to get your critical strike avoidance maxed out, get your throw, throwing attack speed up. And uh, I really like Thorn Slinger as well. It's great for the build because Javelin is a physical skill. So you get plus one. It gives you bleed chance on hit. Movement speed you can never have enough of. And throwing attack speed, just a tiny little bit. So if you have a solid thorn sling slinger, I definitely recommend using it. But it's certainly not a core or a semi-core item. And yeah, that's it for the itemization. And now in terms of the idols, we have a bunch of interesting choices there actually. So let me highlight some viable options. Bleed duration and <laughs> health. Anytime you can get health plus a really good DPS option, you want to do that. So these are amazing idols right here. And then here's another one with bleed duration and physical damage over time. Perfect fit right there. And then you also have these uh, grind idols, which give you damage over time plus bleed on hit. That's a perfect synergy with the build. Here's another one, chance to bleed on hit with really high armor. There's another one with double bleed on hit. All of those are viable options depending on what you're lacking. If you're lacking bleed on hit, consider these ones. And if you're lacking bleed duration, consider these ones. So balance your build out. And then of course, anytime we can run hybrid health, essentially, idols in these little stout idols, we want to do that. Bleed on hit from humble idols. That's solid as well. While you're maxing out your res. So you can see I'm exactly maxed. And then maxed on these ones. Just a little bit of poison missing out. In terms of blessings, you want to switch this one to health. This one doesn't really matter too much. There's not many useful things here. Perhaps lightning res. I don't know for this build specifically. But this one is quite important. And quite different from a lot of other builds. It has some great defensive blessings in here, like 20% uh, all res or 70% critical strike avoidance, but it also has chance to bleed on hit up to 100%. 
And I think that's worthwhile for this build, even if we're sacrificing 20% all res, because we're running Paladin and we can get so much res from our passive tree and our Holy Aura, that you can get away with actually running Bleed on Hit. For any other class, it would be a struggle, let me tell you. Try it out with Bleed on Hit, but if you're struggling on the defensive side, yeah, you might want to switch back to your uh, defensive blessings in this one. And here you can shred physical resistance on hit. It's actually not as beneficial as with some other builds because we're already penetrating like 200% physical res. You could consider changing this one to percent armor or even endurance threshold of 150. I think that one's really useful as well. And then finally this one, yeah, armor. I just really like the armor here. Now let's check out the passives real quick. I just wanted to get this node right here for 30% increased attack speed. And you'll notice it says attack speed. It doesn't say melee attack speed. So that means it applies for both throwing and melee attacks. And then we get one value point in here for 2% block chance, standard five points here. We get a little tiny bit of physical penetration. Normally you want to be maxing this, but we already have so much physical penetration with bleed. It's very marginal. We do get a little bit of block effectiveness here. And honestly, you could move these around to another node. Uh, I have Defiance maxed out. And really, we don't need the attunement. It's just for the elemental resistances. I was struggling getting my resistances maxed out, so I opted to go that route. But also, you need to get it enough points to unlock these nodes. And quite frankly, the other nodes here in the skill tree are not amazing. Honestly, I... I chose to get the elemental resistances in this one over a little bit of physical penetration and physical damage. We get uh, armor while using a shield and then extra armor and crit strike avoid here. These are just amazing nodes to tank up. Uh, and I should mention here, if you're struggling with necrotic resistances, do put points into this one. Mine are maxed out, so I don't need it. Block chances helps. Endurance and health are, are good here. And of course, we have to get the bleed chance from this node as well as the physical penetration and increased damage from this one. And then the leftovers go into health and damage. But yeah, it's pretty straightforward. The only argument one could make is to try and hit Smelter's Might for another 70% bleed chance. If you're wielding a two-handed weapon, it's 140% bleed chance. So it's decent. It's a, it's a decent option. It's just it requires a lot of investment to get there. 15 points and then another 10 so i would need um, 24 points to max that out so i just chose not to go that route i think it's more viable if you're running two-handed weapons all right now let's give the build our verdict i really like this part of the video because uh, you know i get to see where it lands and sometimes i feel like a build should land somewhere but then i look at it and it i look at how it compares to others builds and i go like huh it actually is not that bad, or this build is actually not as good as I thought. Anyway, so, Paladin, Bleed Javelin build. You saw it in the intro, I got a Jorah down in 25 seconds. I even have one kill at like 20 seconds. But I would estimate, on average, it should be around 25 to 30 seconds. And it's a fairly safe kill as well. I did not itemize very well from a survivability perspective. I have to say that outright. Uh, you can get a lot more health than I did. And with something like 3k health, tier 4 Jorah will be a breeze for this build. It is monoliths where this build truly struggles. And a big part of that is a tier or a category that I don't have. And it's the AoE of the Javelin. You can go up to 3-400 corruption. You survive just fine. And you have great range. You can just outrange enemies and you kill them from the edge of your screen. Five javelins riding down. It's great from that perspective. Mobility is really bad. Like I said, lunge is my least favorite mobility skill. Just because it requires an enemy. So it makes it quite awkward. Especially if you're fighting a boss and it's just a single target. The mobility and the lacking thereof paired up with the poor AoE and just awkward monoliths farming experience is why I gave it a tier of B+. Survivability is also not amazing unless you spec into that max block shield option. 
But even then, it can be a little bit of a struggle against damage over time skills. It's something to consider. I think I would bump up the survivability if I was running the max block option here. The multiplayer utility, on the other hand, I gave it an A. And it, it's all because of volatile reversal. Volatile reversal is just an OP skill. You, you make bosses take 180% extra damage from damage over time skills. I mean, that benefits every single ally that's dealing damage over time. Can you imagine this souls ignite, 1000 ignite stacks on the enemy with triple damage from volatile reversal? Now that would be pretty sweet. Anyways, so that's why you get A for utility, cost to itemize. So here, it's just not ideal. You have to get those minus mana cost brings to make the build work. And that can take a while. Farming those up, it's not easy. It's not easy to target farm it. If you want to target farm it, I recommend following my Exalted Farming Guide. You just wait for those days where Temporal Sanctum drops substantially more rings, and then you farm Temporal Sanctum all day long that day. And so final tier, I gave it an A-, minus, and it's mostly because of the poor performance in Monoliths. But otherwise, the build is fun, you know, Raining down five javelins at a time is great. You're like a long range artillery. You know, the skill node makes sense. Siege Barrage. I love it. And that's the appropriate name for that skill node. I also want to mention, honorable mention, for the lightning crit javelin build that we tried on stream. Tier 4 Jora. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's just, let's just say that it didn't work out great. Monoliths, the damage is so pathetic. It's awfully unpleasant. Mm, survivability is not great because we don't deal damage, so we don't leech health. You also need some items to make it work. So all in all, this build is an absolute failure. That's why it gets a final tier of F. Not all builds work out. So keep that in mind. If you're struggling with your build, there's always another build to try out. And it might just take down Jora in other, under 30 seconds with the right items and the right skill choices and passive choices, etc. And that's it for the build guide, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. Here's another Corruption 376 fight with the three Shaman while we wrap things up. And one last PSA. Remember, we're doing the nine hour stream on April 2nd. Vote for which build you want to see if you haven't already. And I'll give you some spoilers of the results so far. There's a clear winner miles ahead of all other builds that got voted up. And it's a build type that I haven't really made a build guide for yet. So it makes a lot of sense that everybody voted it up. And I'm hoping we can min-max three or four builds over that period. We'll see what we can get through. But yeah, to wrap things up, this build is fun. It's a little bit slow in monoliths, but it does great DPS versus bosses. So if you're lacking a boss killer in your party with a bunch of friends in multiplayer, definitely consider this one. Thanks everybody. Take it easy. Kuchiso samadeshta.